What's up guys? Hope you're having a wonderful evening. Today I want to talk to you about creatine. Creatine and pre-workout, alright? When's it best to take it, you know? I uh, just had a question on YouTube, a comment from Josh Jacobs saying, Hey Parker, what are your thoughts on creatine and pre-workout? So today I'm going to give you those. Uh, hopefully you can find something to take away and I hope you enjoy this video. First things first, to get started, uh, we're going to talk about creatine. So with creatine, there's many different kinds. There's buffer creatine, creatine hydrochloride, creatine monohydrate, um, and there are a couple of creatines that I've never even heard of. So, But as far as the research goes, my opinion on that is creatine has been shown to buffer strength. It has to do with the ATP pathways, which means when you take it, it um, allows you to have a little more energy production to get that extra rep. Um, there's so much data on creatine, you know, people are either responders or non-responders, meaning that people's levels are naturally topped off while other people are, would be considered uh, responders because their levels are low, which means when they supplement with creatine, their levels will be raised. And since creatine is a cell volumizer, you know, you will gain size from it, you know. Uh, as far as supplementing creatine long term, studies are kind of back and forth about it. Um, but I think it's pretty conclusive to state that there's no real harm um, of supplementing creatine long term. There was a study where um, they took patients for like five years and they supplemented them um, on creatine and uh, there was no like decrease in natural stores or anything. So I, I, I do think it's safe to take, you know, long term. Um, but normally they're saying, you know, you want to take between five and seven grams daily. Um, you can also load it a little bit different, you know. You can uh, do a little bit more on the, the beginning, like 20 grams a day for a week, and then start with five grams every other, you know, every day, you know, and that should tip top uh, your stores off. But I mean, it's, it's relatively safe. As far as the best one to take, you want to look for a creatine monohydrate. Uh, because the creatine monohydrate is the cheapest version and they really can't find any differences between the, the three different creatines I mentioned, hydrochloride uh, and, and monohydrate. I mean, monohydrate in studies is kind of reigning supreme right now. So um, you definitely want to look at creatine monohydrate. I don't think there's anything wrong with taking it. Uh, just make sure you're safe. And also another cool tidbit I found out is that when you take creatine, um, when you take creatine, you get better results. Your creatine levels are, are, are better um, when you combine creatine with a high protein around 40 to 50 grams of protein with 40 to 50 grams of carbs. So you would want to eat a meal with your creatine in order to raise your levels and get more results. There's a tons of research on creatine. I invite you to do your own and kind of see what's best for you. Now, going to pre-workouts, I am not a big pre-workout guy, you know, I, I rarely have any type of supplement as it is. I mean, I'm a protein powder and whole food kind of guy. So as far as, you know, uh, pre-workout, I'd, I'd probably say with a pre-workout, you have uh, two different kinds, right? You have stimulant pre-workouts and you have non-stim. So with stimulant workouts, or pre-workouts, <laughs> getting tongue-tied, you know. With stimulant pre-workouts, what you're looking at is a massive dose of caffeine, and the stimulant pre-workouts are more geared towards performance. So with a stimulant pre-workout, like one that comes to mind is Mesomorph, or Erratic, you know, Blueprint used to be sold, um, and it's a stimulant pre-workout, but you'll see a lot of caffeine. I'm, you know, you're talking about 300 grams, three, you know, three to 400 milligrams, I mean, of caffeine. Now, a cup of coffee has 60 milligrams of caffeine, so you're essentially getting like five or six cups of coffee in one shot, man. So, really got to be careful with that stuff. Uh, if you take stimulant pre-workouts, I would definitely recommend you cycle off. So, you know, take it every other day for a month. Um, and then, you know, kind of finish off your, your bottle and, you know, stay off for a month or two. 
you know, just to just to give your body the ability, you know, so that your adrenal glands won't be shot from all the extra boost that you're going to be getting from it. But um, the non-stem pre-workouts, generally those are geared towards pump. So when you're taking a non-stem pre-workout, it's not to get a huge performance boost. It's more to get a massive pump, you know, cell volumizing, cell swelling. You want to get bigger. You want to feel better, you know. Not, like nine times out of ten on a non-stem pre-workout, you don't even really feel it. You just notice uh, drastic increases in pump. And there's several ingredients like agmatine, beta alanine, all these things that contribute towards pump. You know, nitric oxide boosters, stuff like that. But I hope this answers your question. Um, I know it's kind of short. Uh, just this is just off the top of my head, um, just with what I've experienced. This is my thoughts on pre-workout and creatine. So if you like the video, make sure you give it a like. You know, make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Also, you can share this video on social media if you'd like to tell other people about the channel. We're rapidly growing and we look forward to producing content every two to three days. That's what, that's what I'm looking about right now. Stay tuned for a back workout coming next Tuesday. That's when I'll be able to film in the gym. Um, We'll get that out, and I look forward to seeing you guys in a couple of days with the next video. See ya.